peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's a get the look for less dupes video using sewing patterns to make very expensive items of clothing and also knitting patterns. I've got one knitting pattern for you this time. Well, for mum if I can talk her into it. So I haven't done one of these videos for a while. I did a bunch of them last year when we were waiting for the sewing room to be made into what it is now. And so I did loads of these videos very close together. I kind of like covered everything that I'd seen and that I liked. And so I haven't, like I say, done one of these for ages. I do every now and again, head over to the high fashion websites to see what's come in, what's new, how expensive things are. I have found a few things that I want to share with you because I like the overall item except for the price tag and I think I have found a sewing pattern that will give me something similar if not in some cases exact dupes of those really expensive items so as ever I am going to be doing a screen recording so let me get that set up and we will start with my Pinterest board for this. Now at the moment this is a secret board, as you can see here, but I will put this public and leave this as is. Please bear in mind that Pinterest will reconfigure the pins on the board for the screen that they're being viewed on for the best kind of piecing together of them. So whilst at the moment they are in the proper order, <laughs> they may not appear so when you look at them on your screen. So the very first thing that I'm going to show you today is a bag because I have been wanting to make this bag for the longest time. I hadn't even realised that it was a inspired by dupe. I mean I, I have no idea if the designer knew of the Hermes toolbox bag before they made the Asta bag but look how similar these two are. So let's have a look at the blue colour Asta bag in its all its glory. So this is one of the plainer versions without all of the hardware on it. And then this is the one that I love with the long johns, the turn lock, and I just think this one's absolutely gorgeous. I love the shape of this bag. I already have my fabric and hardware picked out to make two of these. <laughs> and I have made one previously for a customer and they are absolutely gorgeous. I was scrolling, scrolling through Pinterest and came across this bag and just thought, oh my gosh, that's an absolute dupe for the blue color Asta bag. And then I realized it was an Hermes bag and it's called the Toolbox Leather Handbag. Now, Hermes obviously don't have a website for me to look and they don't sell online. There is a whole process for getting an Hermes bag, especially the Kellys and Birkins. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it seems like a lot of jump hoops to jump through for something that is very, very expensive. But I understand that that's the mystique that the, camp, the company have built up around their bags. And that is why there is so much hype and they cost so much. And it's, you know, it's, it's a big thing to get yourself an Hermes bag. I personally am not a fan of the Birkin or the Kelly. I don't like the opening methods on either of them. I just, I would get so frustrated with it all hanging floppy. And I would also get really frustrated having to lock it up every single time because that would be pr how I would prefer to use it. So when I saw the toolbox bag, I was just like, that one, that one I can get on board with. Now this is a resale site. This is Vestiaire Collective. And the this is one of the more expensive toolbox bags that I found on there at 6,000 pounds. Yeah, six grand. Actually for a resale, the, the resale market on Hermes bags is insane. They usually cost more than if you buy them in store, but again, because of the scarcity of bags and the, 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 the difficulty of getting hold of bags, lots of people do buy on the resale market. So I went through Vestiaire Collective as one of the first ones that I'd seen that had some toolbox leather bags in stock, found this one. Like I said, this is one of the more expensive ones, but the, even the, the less expensive ones were like three and a half thousand pounds. I think you can see what I'm talking about. The shape of this bag is very reminiscent of the blue color Asta bag. Very, very reminiscent. Obviously the blue color Asta bag has more detailing on the front, which I do really like, but obviously would be very, very easy to leave off because it literally is a feature. It's not an integral part of the construction of the bag. The toolbox bag does have a different feature on it as well that the, as you can see here, 
the leather wraps around the side and doesn't have a side seam where the blue color aster bag does have a side seam the whole way up and down i mean i i love these ones with quilting cottons in them it's a really good way of showing off a beautiful print like this one but you could totally make the entirety of the bag out of a faux leather or a real leather and have something that comes out looking like this this does have what i believe is like a guitar strap it is a much thicker strap than the blue color aster bag has but again really easy to fudge that you just make the attachments for the bag hardware that you've got and then widen out the strap like like this i don't think that yeah i think that might even be webbing rather than leather on the strap deal or do amazing guitar straps with lots of embroidery on them and studs and detailing they are statement pieces in and of themselves and are sold separately that you can then add on to other bags so i like the idea of doing a regular crossbody strap for the aster bag and then adding maybe a guitar strap for a little bit of interest and detailing the blue color aster bag Whilst expensive, like I say, I have made one of these for a customer. It was out of leather and quilting cottons, the Emmeline bag hardware, plus my time, the pattern, and a very tiny profit margin. I charged £450 for that bag. That was an expensive bag, but it was a beautiful bag, if I say so myself, and the customer was very, very happy with that, but it wasn't £6,000 pounds six thousand pounds it always absolutely amazes me just how expensive handbags can be and i appreciate that you are paying for the name but also this is completely handmade high quality leather high quality hardware and stuff like that i'm not saying i'm not justifying the heart the price tag six grand no way i just even if i was a millionaire i don't think i would be buying i don't think i would want to jump through the hoops that you have to jump through for hermes that would that would that would bug me a bit i think I think but I do think it is a gorgeous shape it's very me it's easy to get in and out of and the blue color aster bag is such a brilliant dupe for it that as I say I've already got two planned and um, I'm now thinking I might need a tan faux leather version as well although I do have my Annette so maybe not maybe a different colored leather this is so pretty. Okay, next up we have our knitwear. So this time around I was looking through Matches Fashion and I came across this Amelia Wickstead cable knit jumper in pale blue. Emery cable knit wool blend sweater, £675. Let's have a look at the details. It's blue, 95% wool, 5% spandex, hand wash, cable knit, ribbed edges. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Very, very me. I would probably want it slightly more cropped or for the rib to be tighter so that it really in at the waist and that is a technical term but I love all of these details the cabling the uh, kind of like raglan shoulders the wide the wide band at the neck the deep cuffs I think it's beautiful and it's the kind of knit that mum enjoys mum doesn't like boring knits she wants to be challenged in her knitting when I bring her challenging knits she is much more enthused about making them than she is something that is just stocking net or just knitting I'm not sure on the terminology. Yeah, I saw this one and I thought, it's gorgeous. I hadn't even seen a pattern for this one. I was just like, no, I, it's, it's beautiful. And it completely reminds me of one of my favorite pattern designers, Kim Hargreaves. So I went to have a look on Ravelry at Kim's latest releases. And look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? And so, so similar. Now, obviously it's not exactly the same. I appreciate that. Not completely identical but it's a damn good interpretation. It has the cabling up the front, it has sort of the raglan sleeves, nice wide neckband, deep cuffs, blues on sleeves, and it is cropped as well. Now this is from the Full Capsule Collection, which I believe is one of her newer books. I haven't seen this collection before. The only downside with Kim Hargreaves patterns is that you can't buy them individually, you have to buy the books that they come with, but they're all gorgeous, so yeah i i mean i'm totally got this on my wish list this is for worsted weight templi wool i have found some really pretty shiny wool from uh, from hobby hobby uh, i think uh, i can't hop, hobby eel I, mm, but it's very very pretty and not too expensive so i'm going to float this idea past mum and see what she thinks of knitting me a jumper like this i think it would go really well with the anaconda antithesis if i got the color of the wool that i was thinking of i think that would be a really good combination it's just absolutely beautiful so yeah love that 
absolutely love that. Okay, next up we have one dress and I've got four patterns for you as kind of like jumping off points. The dress is by Alessandra Rich and I have featured her in a Get the Look for Less before. I really enjoy her aesthetic. I kind of surprised myself by how much to be honest because I wasn't really ever a really like kind of like lace and frills kind of a person but I just I think it's gorgeous I love the collar I love the sleeves I love the fit and flare it is way too short for me way way too short for me I would lengthen this I would lengthen this a lot but it is a very pretty bodice and as you guys know I I'm very prone to taking bodices and making them my own. This is a Gertie bodice that I've added my favourite sleeves onto because I wanted a winter style dress. Pattern hacking and pattern smooshing is one of my favourite things to do and I could totally see myself taking this bodice and putting different style skirts on it. So this is black and white silk with white lace, concealed zip fastening along the back, 100% silk, the trim is 90% cotton, 10% nylon, the lining is cupro and lining number two is nylon, dry clean only and it's made in Italy and it's £1,490. Expensive. <laughs> Alessandra Rich, let's have a look at all of her clothing on Net-a-Porter. She has a very definite aesthetic, it's the details, the trim, you know, it, it, it's a very, a very definite look with her style. Lots of colours. I just, I like it. I would, everything here, I, I, I would, I mean, this, this cardigan's gorgeous. There was a Zara cardigan that was very similar. Rachel had bought it and was wearing it when she came to visit in May. I mean, the, a strawberry print, oh, that's gorgeous as well. And the ruffles, again, way too short for me. The heart on the front there, no. That's very 80s and no, not for me. But I do like the overall aesthetic of her designs. I think I think they're nice. I would wear a lot of these things. I would tweak a lot of these things, but I would wear a lot of these things. I have found you four patterns that, four? Have I got more? I think I've got six. I think I've got six patterns that will get you the Alessandra Rich look for less. So the very first one is the Harley dress from Vicky Sews. Again, this is very reminiscent of Alessandra Rich. It's got the collar and cuff detail contrast to the main fabric, all the buttons up the front. It's a cute dress. It's a very, very cute dress. I like it a lot. I, again, would probably lengthen this and I'm not sure that I would wear this exact one myself, but I did see it and immediately think that's a dupe for Alessandra Rich. There's definitely Alessandra Rich inspiration visible to me at least in this dress. The next one is the Sharon dress and I'm, I'm this is the one that I featured before in a Get the Look for Less video and I think as I say it was for an Alessandra Rich uh, dress but it's got the kind of like dipped collar, the little sleeves, again far too short for me I would lengthen this but I think this is an absolutely gorgeous dress and very very reminiscent of Alessandra Rich aesthetic. We've got the new Vogue one at 905 and again the collar the cuffs the bow detail the buttons this one does have a pencil skirt on it i am going to buy this pattern i do really like this pattern the sleeves are awesome i'm not sure about the bow but i like the rest of it and i will just put on a different skirt like a, a fit and flare skirt because again that's my preference but this again i saw it and immediately thought of this designer we've got mccall's 8284 again sort of the dropped long collar there are a couple of collar options on this one you've got the kind of rounded collar with the ruffle on it or you've got the long elongated pointed collar I like both I like the sleeves again this has got a pencil skirt on it which is not my preference I would buy this pattern with the intention of making the shirts and using the bodice as a jumping off point and putting a different skirt on it but again you can see the inspiration the Alessandra rich kind of inspiration in this one and the final one is the McCall's 8239 I've got one two three five patterns for you five five inspiration patterns for you so again this one has the details in it it's got the pointed or rounded collar the little keyhole at the front this one does have a side zipper in it which I am not a huge fan of so I probably would end up splitting the collar and putting a back zip in this one it has the fuller skirt that I like and you could also have some fun with putting trims into these I don't know if they're technically princess seams 
but you could have a lot of fun putting trims into these seams here to give you more of the Alessandra Rich look if you wanted to add lace or deco decoration in those places. I thought again this was very reminiscent of Alessandra Rich styles and inspiration. Yeah, it just, it reminded me. So I've got the one designer dress for £1,490 and then five different patterns that will give you something similar. They'll be get really good jumping off point. None of them are exactly the same, I appreciate, but they're all so, so similar that they will definitely give you that sort of aesthetic if that's what you like. And I do own a few of these patterns and I will be purchasing the newer McCall's and Vogue ones because they are gorgeous. Next up we have a halter dress which is not a usual thing that I go for but I did really like the look of this Adam Lippis waterfall belted pleated floral print silk chiffon maxi dress for £1,865. It is multicolored silk chiffon concealed zip fastening along back 100% silk and 100% silk lining dry clean only. It's beautiful. It is actually not too low cut at the front, which I really, really like. And it has a lot of pleating detail over the bodice. I've picked out the Vogue 9343 pattern. This one is a much more cleavage-tastic. It goes down so much lower at the front, but it does have the same back as the Adam Lippis dress. Let's see if I've got a back view. There we go. So it's cut in at the back, along the shoulder blades and this one kind of has the uh, pleated detail going over the collar but the Vogue one does have the collar detail at the back there and you could totally do that if you decided to do an overlay over this Vogue pattern so use this as your base and then pleat some silk chiffon or silk something silk chiffon pleating god that sounds horrible but you could totally do an overlay to get a similar kind of look what i would do is sew up the front to the point where i could wear a bra because there is absolutely no chance that i'm going to be wearing this dress as low cut as that it's down to her midriff i mean she looks amazing in it but that's low that that's can see her belly button solo <laughs> yeah and obviously this one is also a midi dress so you would need to elongate the skirt into a maxi skirt if you wanted to copy something very very similar but again that is very easy to do ah there we go <laughs> i could work out how to get back to the main page i think this is beautiful there are very very similar fabrics to this out on the market i mean silk chiffon is ridiculously expensive you know like and also the, the thought of working with silk chiffon just fills me with dread but this would look beautiful in a rayon they are somewhat easier to work with and will still give you the drape and, sh and swish especially a rayon chalet something very very lightweight this is going to be an absolute bitch of a dress to make but it's going to be beautiful once it's done and i think the vogue 9343 is going to be an excellent dupe that will give you something very similar to the adam lipis dress Okay, next up we have these two. Now I'm slightly cheating here. I've actually already made my dupe of this dress, but I don't know if I've told you about it before. <laughs> I'm really sorry if I have, but I absolutely love this dress. I think it's gorgeous. My friend brought this to my attention. I've made an entire video about making this dress. I love the combination of prints. I really like the overall silhouette. This is a dress from Rixo. They don't do this one anymore. They do the same sort of thing that a lot of my favourite designers do. They have a silhouette that they love and they do it in different fabrics season on season. So this is the Melanie Sienna Starlet dress and it's £335. It is silk crepe de chine, silk viscose, velvet velvet polka dots, deep v-neck, blues on sleeves with shoulder gathers, elasticated cuffs, empire waist, concealed zip on left side, interesting. Uh, skirt is aligned for superior drape, falls beautifully, bias cut, contours to the body, skirt is split on the left side. I think this is absolutely beautiful, it's got the deep v-neck line, it's got the kind of point up to here, beautiful sleeves, we all know I like a a blues on cuffed sleeve or elasticated sleeve, it's gorgeous. I like that the upper fabric comes down lower at the back and actually kind of hits at the waistline. The bias cut skirt does scare me a little bit because of my shape. I don't think I would overly love it on me. The pattern that I've picked is the French Poetry Loon Dress and it is 
so so similar and as I say I've already made this up and I absolutely love how it's come out so it has the kind of empire line deep v lots of different sleeve options i ended up doing flutter sleeves on mine i can also imagine adding on these sleeves and making it into a midi dress because my first one was a maxi i think if you like the rixo aesthetic the french poetry loon dress is a really great one for you to invest in and just have some fun with print clashing. The next one that I'm going to make is going to be an all over the same and as I say probably a midi with longer sleeves. In my head long sleeves and maxi skirt equal evening gown. I don't know why my brain has fixated on that but that is how I see those kind of dresses in my head. So if I do put on long sleeves like this I will always make the skirt midi. I have plans to make another one of those because I just absolutely love the French Poetry Loon dress. I think it's a beautiful pattern. It's a really easy one to make. They've just released a size increase so they have an add-on for the bigger bust sizes and they also do a high back pattern piece if you don't want the V at the back as well as the front. So it's a versatile dress. I 100% recommend the pattern I really really love mine. Next up I have a couple of inspiration pieces and one pattern for you. Now they are inspiration they are not exactly the same. I was scrolling through net -a and I absolutely love doing that. The majority of the stuff that I see I usually go through the new in section it's just like I what? That's just no. But every now and again something jumps out at me and this Valentino bow detailed silk organza blouse jumped out at me. I think it's beautiful. I've got quite a few silks in my stash which are all up here now. I have plans for quite a few similar style sheer tops to be worn with a camisole underneath and a skirt or trousers and long sleeves and I think I love the kind of like sheer nature of it but still covered up. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, especially with those pink trousers. So this one is got a kind of high neck with a tie at the back. Let's see. Big bow at the back, which can be worn in a couple of ways. You don't have to tie it in a bow, you can wear it as a scarf like she has here. This one also has drop shoulders, cuffs that have obviously been interfaced with something non-sheer so that the cuff, the interior of the cuff doesn't look messy and that is something that I would recommend. Everything else looks like it's been French themed, which is, as we know, my favourite. It's fuchsia silk organza, ties at the back, 100% silk, dry clean only, made in Italy and £1,200. The other thing that I've seen is this Zimmerman dress and this wouldn't be one of those, my videos if I wasn't featuring one Zimmerman item. This is very similar, not the same, similar. So it has the big sleeves, it has the cuffs, it has the ruched neckline, no tie and it is properly on the shoulders. But this one is a dress with a ruffle along the bottom. I think this one is absolutely gorgeous. I like that they've belted it in. I'm not sure. I don't think there's any shaping in at the waist other than the little belt loops that they've got to put the tie on. I really like that. I think this is a very, very lovely dress. It looks like it zips up the back. Let's have a look. Cream and brown silk twill, concealed zip fastening along back, 100% silk, dry clean only. And it is 850 pounds. And you can see the twill weave in that silk close up. Oh, I need some of that fabric, it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful dress. I, I would wear this. I was wearing something very similar yesterday but mine had a v-neck at the front and I really like the kind of higher neck at the back. So I went on the hunt and I found the Trend Patterns Raglan Dress. You can also make this as a shirt. There is an obvious difference, it's in the title, it's a raglan sleeve so it has those raglan details there that go into the neckline. Here we go, you can see she's made it as a shirt as well and it has elast elasticated cuffs it would be really easy to add in cuffs a continuous lap button them close if you didn't want to add in the elastic I don't mind the elastic as we know I like this kind of sleeve but I just thought that it's absolutely beautiful and very reminiscent of the two inspiration pieces as I say the pink one has drop shoulders the cream one has regular shoulders and the inspiration pattern has a raglan shoulder. So that is the biggest difference, but it does have the high neckline. It's got the gathers into it. It's got the bow at the back. This one is got the um, just kind of like finished opening at the back. You don't have to put a zipper in it like you would with the Zimmerman inspired dress because this one, as we saw, has a zip at the back there. So this one does not have that. You could put it in if you want, but you know, why make your life harder to get the Zimmerman look you would just add a ruffle along the bottom yeah 
I, I love this. I think it's a really good dupe for both of those very expensive designer pieces. Again, not exactly the same, very different shoulder treatment, but still reminiscent. If you made this up in bright pink silk organza, the, the thing that people would be saying wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, it's got raglan um, seams instead of like drop shoulder seams. It would just be like, well, that looks like that Valentino 1200 pound top. Did I get the price right? I did, 1200, I did, yes. I think both of these are gorgeous. We all know I love Zimmerman. I've never tried a Zimmerman piece on. I still want to go and do that. I, I don't know if I would, I think I would buy their knitwear just because I don't think I could persuade mum to make as many of their crazy knitwear pieces as as I would like but I I, I yeah I, I'm not sure that I would actually buy any of their clothes because I really don't think they'd fit me the way that I'd want them to but they are beautiful and I love them they're one of my favorite designers I'm gonna have to get the trend patterns raglan dress because I think I can make this work for me I love how it looks the top looks tucked into those trousers I think that's gorgeous very pirate-esque the final piece I have for you is a denim jacket and I saw this on Pinterest and I just said oh that's the Sorrento jacket just with a whole bunch of stunts added onto it and it turns out that it's actually a Versace jacket from the Versace Resort 2020 I think summer range again this is not available on any of the bigger stores now because it's two years old so this is a resale site and they are reselling it for £2,125.08 the original price on here was £2,656.35. I'm guessing this is not based in the UK. The 8P is, is, is weird. But this is so reminiscent of the Sorrento jacket with the detailing down the front here. See those details down there? It would be so easy to make up the Sorrento jacket and add in the stud detailing. I mean, this would cost a lot of money in studs because there's a lot of studs on here. I wonder what the back looks like. Have we got a picture of the back? We have. Now this one does have a slightly different back and I would not also want Gianni Versace written across my back in studs. This one has a V at the back and the Sorrento jacket does not. The Sorrento jacket has a straight across yoke at the back. You could put the V in it wouldn't be too hard to do. I'm not sure I would bother, but you could definitely put the V in. But the Sorrento jacket is part of the Summer Dreaming capsule wardrobe ebook, which is 30 pounds for the five patterns, the Alba, Porto, Ravello, Siena, and Sorrento, and then having it printed as well, if you, or printing it yourself and taking the time to stick it together. That is the downside, but the detailing on the Sorrento is so similar to the Versace jacket that I could not tell you about it. You can get studs that have got rhinestones in them, you can get different coloured studs, you can get different size studs which obviously you will need for this because there are different sizes and colours of studs all over this but you could have a lot of fun. You probably would want a rivet press as well. I don't think your hand would be thanking you by the end of this jacket if you were trying to do it with one of those ones that squeezes. I do have a rivet press. I My dad bought it for me for Christmas four or five years ago because I make a lot of bags. It's one of those things that I absolutely love. Bought it with the nine millimeter double cap rivet die and cutting set in it. I have since added eyelets, press studs, larger and smaller rivets to it as well. It's very versatile and I, I love it. It's one of those must-have items in my sewing room because of the type of sewing that I do. If you were going to an attempt a jacket like this, I would suggest either buying a rivet press, which start at around £50. So this is getting to the expensive side because it's an expensive pattern, expensive piece of equipment to do it, the rivets themselves, but it's still not going to cost you £2,125.08. It's still not going to be that expensive. So yes, it, 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 if you don't have all the pieces ahead of time, it's going to be an expensive project to start. But if you make bags, if you make jackets, if you make, I mean, dresses as well, things with press studs on them, rivet presses, they do end up paying for themselves in the, the amount of like, yeah, not, not killing your hand having to do them. So yes, the last piece, the Versace Resort 2020 studded Gianni signature dark blue denim jean jacket. Ridiculously expensive for a denim jacket that I don't think is lined either. I do have a full video up here showing you how to draft and sew in a lining to the Sorrento jacket. It's designed to be unlined, denim jackets are. I personally 
don't like the look of overlocker thread on the inside of woven garments and I also find it really frustrating trying to fight my way in and out of jackets when the sleeves don't have a slippery lining on the inside of them so I line all of the jackets that I make all of the unlined jackets that I ever attempt I always somehow end up putting a lining in even if it is just to the sleeves it's just a preference of mine but there is a full video talking you through the process if you would like to line your Sorrento jacket I'm not saying you have to just saying that you can and I personally for a dark denim like this would go for something really bright and in your face I actually have a dark denim jacket planned for October it's going to be covered in patches though rather than studs but I am using a royal blue silk cotton lining with starship enterprises all over it it kind of looks like a polka dot from far away and you get close up it's like ah yes that is geeky so it's going to be a very very geek-tastic jacket with all the patches on the outside and the star trek on the inside but 10 out of 10 would recommend you can definitely have fun with the lining fabrics if you have a plain outer like this one so yes that's the seven pieces that i found recently that i absolutely loved and also thought I know I could make that using this pattern so you'll have to let me know in the comment section down below how you think I've done for the pattern dupes for the very very expensive designer pieces that I found I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon bye